Defining relationships within our models unlocks a whole lot of power whenever it comes to querying and persisting data within our database. We're going to be able to reference relationships using related models without needing to actually define queries for the related models we need to populate. So we're going to dig into this in the next lesson, but to quickly show you what I'm talking about here, for our models, whenever we query off of our models, we're going to be able to preload relationships onto our model instance. So for example, say we have a user and that user has a related profile. We're going to be able to join that profile to our user model so that it's available to us via user.profile by preloading that relationship. So we're going to dig into that in the next lesson. Before we dig into that, we need to kind of understand how to set up these relationships so that we have this ability available to us. So within our models to actually define the relationships, we're gonna use both a decorator and a type to define that relationship. And Adonis provides decorators and types for each type of relationship. So we have a has one that defines one-to-one -one relationships, a has many, which defines one-to-many relationships, a belongs to, which defines kind of the inverse of the has one and has many relationships, a many-to-many, -many, which defines many-to-many -many relationships, and a has many through, which kind of allows you to define Define relationships through another related model. We're going to do a whole separate lesson on that. So for each of these, we're going to have a decorator for the relationship. It's going to take a callback, which we need to return back the related model. And then with this, we need to also define the type of it. So we have a relationship type, which we define with a type of our related model. So before we dive into defining our relationships, I want to start with the user and then we'll kind of correlate what we learn with the user over to our other models. And before we dive into our users relationships, I want to kind of take a look and understand what relationships we're going to need. So you can see for our tasks, we have a created by and an assigned to both of these relate back to our user. And then lastly, for our user, we also have our project users. So this has a specific user ID that will relate back to our user as well. So here we're looking at three relationships for our user model. Now that we know our relationships, let's go ahead and step through what types of relationships we're going to need for each of these. So remembering back to my college days, I can understand that database relationship types are always a struggle point, right? So that's why I really like the way that Adonis handles their relationship naming, right? They're relatively easy to understand and correlate to different relationships just by describing your relationship in non-technical terms. So for example, here we have created by for our tasks that relates back to our user. Our user can have many tasks that they create. However, a task can only be created by a single user. If we kind of tweak the wording on that a little bit, we can get those to actually go one-to-one -one with the different Adonis relationships that we have available to us. So we could say my user can have many tasks and my task belongs to a specific user. So if we relate both halves of that sentence to Adonis's relationship options here, we can say our user has many tasks and our tasks belong to a specific user. So thanks to Adonis's verbiage here, it kind of helps relate the different relationship types to the relationship options that they have here. Another thing that I've found that's typically true is if we jump into our tasks model here, the side of the relationship that typically has a column definition for the relationship is typically the side that's going to get the belongs to, right? This task belongs to our user. And then whenever that's the case, typically the inverse side for our user is determined whether we can have one of those or whether our user can have many of those. And then if it's many on both sides, then we know we need to use a many to many relationship. And typically those involve intermediary tables like our project tasks and project users tables. So now that we understand kind of how to go about describing which relationship type we need to use for a relationship, let's go ahead and start defining these relationships. So the way that I like to do it within our models here, if we jump into our user model, is I like to have my columns and then I like to have computed properties after my columns. And then I like to do relationships and then I like to do my hooks. So if we insert some space right after our last column here, we can start off with our relationship to our tasks. So let's do at has many, since we know our users can have many tasks, and this applies for both relationships coming from our tasks table. And then we need to pass in a callback function that provides our task model, and then we just define it like a normal column here, so public tasks. And then we need to pass in the type of our relationship, so has many here, and then type of the model that we're relating, so task. So by default, by defining this relationship in this way, what Adonis will do is it will look for the related model name. So here we're defining that we have many tasks. So what it's going to do is it's going to look on the task model for a column for this relationship. So it will look for this model, so user ID. So it's going to look for a user ID property 
on our task model. And you'll notice we don't have that. That's not how we're defining this relationship, right? So what we need to do is explicitly tell Adonis which column here to use for our relationship and for this particular relationship, because we're gonna have two that are pretty much identical here, right? So let's start with our created by. And the way that we do this is right after our callback function here, we're gonna provide a second argument that's an object. And since the column defining this relationship is off on another model, what we need to do is use a foreign key property here to define the property on the other model to use for the relationship. So this, we just need to provide created by. So with that, Adonis now has all the context it needs on this side of the relationship for our user to task relationship, right? It knows that this side is a has many, so our users can have many tasks. It knows which property on our tasks model to use to look up this relationship. And it also has the TypeScript definition that it's going to need to provide us some context whenever we actually start to query and persist data. So with this side of the relationship done, let's go ahead and hop over to our task model and define the inverse side of the relationship. So again here, let's insert some spaces at the bottom of our last column. And let's start off by remembering what type of relationship we need, right? So our user has many tasks and our task belongs to a user. So we're gonna be using at belongs to and then we need to provide that a callback function which returns back our user model. And then just like on our user model, we need to define the column that we're using because we're not using just the basic user ID here for this relationship. So we need to provide context as to which column to use. So since we have created by on our task model and we're working within our task model, instead of using foreign key here, we're gonna use local key since this property here is local to this relationship definition. And here we just need to pass in the same thing, created by. And then after this decorator, just the same as the other side, public, and then we define it as user. And then, then we need to provide a type for the relationship, type of our related model. And that should do it. Now we have both sides of this relationship defined. So this relationship is good to go. Okay, so moving on to our next relationship we have assigned to, and this one's gonna be pretty much identical to our belongs to here. So we can just copy and paste this because again, this is going to belong to our user. Instead of using the created by column to define this relationship, we want to use assigned to. And so for the property name here for these relationships, we can really use whatever we need to to properly define this relationship, right? So instead of user here, I guess created by would really make more sense if this was creator. And then for our assigned to, this should probably be assignee, right? And so now whenever we query these relationships, if we preload, what we'll be preloading is our creator and our assignee. And these will still use the IDs to define those particular relationships that are on our model. Okay, and then on our user model, we need to define the inverse for our assignee here. So let's copy this. And so here, I think tasks still make sense for tasks that you've created, uh, but for our assigned to here, so we need to change our foreign key to assigned assigned to, and then for the property name for this, it probably would make more sense to maybe do assigned tasks. So we can go ahead and give that a save. And so now whenever we go to query or preload either of these relationships, we'll use tasks or assigned tasks to define that. So last up on our user relationships here, we have our intermediary table that we need to relate via both our project and our user models. And since we have an intermediary table and a user can belong to many projects and a project can have many users, we have a many to many relationship here. And thanks to that, we don't need a model for our intermediary tables because we define the relationships off of our project and off of our user, and we can skip over the project users table completely. So just like we have with our tasks and assigned tasks here, let's do at, and instead of has many, let's do many to many. And let's just pass in our related model. So this will be project. And then the naming for this will be public projects, and then a type of many to many type of project. And so by default, the way that Adonis will determine which intermediary table to use for this many to many relationship is alphabetically. So it's going to alphabetically sort the two related models. So our project and our user, it's going to lowercase both of those and then it's going to snake case them. So it will look for by default for this relationship, a project users table. And that's exactly what we're using. However, if we named our intermediary table something different, just like with our other two relationships here, we can define an options object and we have available to us a pivot table property that we can define and all that we need to do is pass in the table name for that, so project users. However, since this is what we're using, we can just 
nix that off altogether. However, if we take a look at our project users table migration here, you can see we do have a, this is supposed to be role ID, not sort order, my bad on that. All right, so we do have a role ID and that should probably be unsigned as well. Um, the sort order was on our project tasks table. I think that was a copy and paste error. Sorry about that. So then we'll just rerun our migration to get that to propagate to our database. But what I was going to say is we do have this role ID here on our intermediary table that in most cases we're going to probably need whenever we query the relationship existence off of this pivot table. So if we hop back into our user model here, instead of defining our foreign key or our pivot table, we can define pivot columns. And what this will do is anytime that it queries this relationship, it will add to the data that it pulls, the value for the pivot column that we define. So this can be an array, and then we just define whatever columns we need to define off of our pivot table or our intermediary table. So we can give that a save. So now we'll have access to our role ID anytime that we query our user project relationship. And now we need to define the inverse of this relationship. So let's hop over to our project model and let's do the exact same thing. So many to many, callback function returns back our user model. Uh, we need to define the pivot column that we want to include in case we're querying off of our project instead of our user. So pivot columns, role ID, and then we can just define the relationship here. So users, and this will be many to many type of user. Okay, cool. So last up, I think the only relationships that we have left here are our project to task relationship. So we have our intermediary table here for project tasks. So our projects can have many tasks because a project with a single task would be boring. And a task can have many projects in case, you know, we need to share a task across multiple projects for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and define that relationship here. So we're already on our project. So let's start here. So at many to many callback function, the model we need to pass in here is our task and then public tasks, many to many type of task. Again, with our pivot table naming, we're good here since we're doing P before T, so project tasks, but we do have our sort order that we want to include. Man, I really messed up with copying and pasting. So this one here should not be role ID, this should be our sort order. Um, and then this should not be user ID, it should be task ID. I am really sorry about that. I completely kerfuffled that up. So, and then the in table tasks. Okay, and then since I got our sort order and our role IDs mixed up, we also wanna make sure that our default two here for our sort order is zero. And then for the inverse for our role ID, the default should be one. Um, so this should be our relationship for our project tasks. We should have sort order, project ID, and task ID, and then for our project user, we should have project ID, user ID, and role ID. I am really sorry I messed that up. So we'll rerun our migrations here as the last thing we do in this lesson, but uh, we do have that sort order column that we should have on our project tasks table that we need to include with this relationship. So let's go ahead and add that in as our pivot column. So sort order. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to, whenever we're querying, specify that we want to order by this sort order that's in our intermediary table. Okay, great. So last thing that we need to do here is add this relationship for our project tasks to our tasks model. So again, at many to many, provided a callback for our task model, public projects, many to many type of project. And I almost messed up again here. That should be project, not task. Okay, there we go. And lastly here, we need to define the pivot column for this side of the relationship as well. So pivot column here is sort order, and that should do it. So for our task, we have two relationships for our user. We have our created by and our assigned to that are related via a creator property and an assign E property. And then lastly here, we have our tasks to project relationship. That's a many to many. And with this, we're including a sort order column off of our pivot table. For our project, we have our project to user relationship and we have our project to task relationship. For our project to user relationship, we're including our role ID. And for our project to tasks relationship, we're including our sort order intermediary column. And again, thanks to these many to many relationship definitions, we can nix and exclude models for our intermediary tables altogether because we'll be able to reach over the intermediary table over to the relationship itself. And then for our user here, we have three relationships. We have our user to task, 
which is using the created by property to define this relationship in particular. We have our user to tasks again, which is using assign to to define this particular relationship. And then we have our many to many with our project users. That is including a role ID from our pivot table. Okay, so a couple of housekeeping items here before we wrap up this lesson, rerun our migrations. Um, I wanna clean up some of our relationship migration definitions. Um, so our created by should really be not nullable because we always want a task to have a creator. So let's go ahead and define that for this column. So not nullable. Uh, our assigned to, I wanna explicitly define as nullable, just so looking back, we can explicitly see this is nullable. Um, and that should take care of that. And then we'll also need to do that for the model itself. So for our task model here, I believe I put a question mark after our created by. Let's take that off to make that required. Same thing here for our project tasks relationship. We have a project ID and task ID. This should be required for both. So I'm gonna explicitly define not nullable for both of these. Go ahead and save that. And then the same thing for our project users, both of these should be not nullable as well. So not nullable and not nullable. I apologize that I missed this on our migration lesson. Thankfully here we have migrations, we're still in development and we don't have any data in our database. So it's really a breeze to take care of this. So let's do node ace migration rollback. I don't know what my last run was for, so let's just do batch zero here. Okay, all of our migrations are now rolled back. So let's do node ace migration run. And there we go. Okay, so now those corrections should now be within our database. Okay, cool. So now we should be good to go ahead and move forward with the next lesson by starting to learn how to query and persist data using our models into our database.